Let's get to it. I can't wait. The review. Uh, I have 1862. 1862 Railway Mania in the Eastern Counties. It is designed by Mike Hutton. And the art is also by Mike Hutton and, yes. and Roger McGowan. It is a GMT Games uh, published title. And it is from 2019. Jennifer, you are you are my Sherpa through this world. <laughs> Can you... So I think that a lot of our audience are Euro gamers that are getting into the medium to heavier end right. of the Euro game scale. Can you tell us what is, when we say 18xx, what are the salient features that make something 18xx in, in 18, besides the title? Right, of course. Well, the main thing is you have, okay, and again, I have not played all 18xx's. I've played five and I've played a few a lot of times. Do you want to, do you want to know my history of 18xx? Because I probably should start with that. I yeah. should say that I have played 1830 probably eight, ten times. Um, 1856, I've probably played five times, 1870, a couple times, uh, 1825, I played a, a couple times back in the day. Um, and then everything else is just very, very recent and not, not a lot of plays, right? 79, 46 and 62. You are going to be hearing a lot of numbers that mean something to Jennifer and I, and mean nothing, well, I'm gonna and try. Mean nothing to to a hey, lot of people. After- but to, to, let's just say this: each 18xx game is a train game, and every one of them has its own special character. It has a different map, but a lot of times they have different rules and different yeah. and different feeling in terms right. of how the game is. So it's think of it like you go into Baskin Robbins and you've got your 30 flavors of ice cream. Each one, they're still all ice cream but they all have their own specific little flavor and people will have their own favorites and not just one favorite. It's like, I might be in the mood for right. A versus B. Right, so I, right. I interrupted you. Continue. Okay. So, you know, the basics generally is that there's a stock round and then there's an operating round um, that you are an investor and that you invest in companies. The companies Treasury is always separate from yours. You don't mix your money with the treasury. During the operation... Which, which means that the money that is... A lot of the money that's in the game is a company's money and right. not your personal exactly. money. But at the end of the... But the end of the day, right. it, personal money is how you right. win. Exactly. And um, the main... Well, I would argue that that's very different. Okay. In euros, in euros, your money is your money, and that's all there is. Sure, yeah. And in eighteen xx, that is very, very different. And it's very, very key to how you play the game. So, in the operating rounds, you know, you're gonna lay track, run trains, get revenue, decide what to do with it. If you put down station tokens yeah, right. occasionally, and right? Yeah, and you're you, building out your you're building out the route, and you're running trains. You're you're operating the train company that you right. that you are and, running and you're deciding do i want to pay out dividends or do i want to put the money back into the the company so that the company can can get better which in 18xx terminology we call well some of us it turns out call plowing but that not was, everyone calls it plowing uh i didn't you see the link i pay, i posted on the discord no i missed it yeah well so i asked on bgg Mm, right? Right. Does that, yeah, it's plowing something different? Well, the expert of expert, Clearclaw, okay. uses plowing. JC Clearclaw knows everything about this game. Right, exactly. He's, you know, so I'm like, look, if, if he uses it, I can use it. But, um, <laughs> yeah, you know, because there's a lot of lingo, I think. Oh, there's there's so much. It is such its own little hobby yeah, within and, the hobby. Right, that exactly. That it's got all sorts of terminology and little inside right, lingo. Exactly. And, like two each so, and XX players, when, they're des- when one is describing to another how the new game is. right. They will speak in a foreign tongue. Though. Exactly. But then that's always, you know, I mean, it's just like us in the hobby. We speak in foreign tongues, right? Oh, so yeah. So basically then there are two basic styles of 18xx. Mm-hmm. Um, there is a style 1830, 1817 are both um, stock games where you do a lot of stock manip- manipulation and you try to win through sometimes crushing the other player in the stock market yep. or, you know, um, 
to, to describe how it would work is you're building up a company. Somebody else is buying shares in that train company because they see that you're doing well and they want to profit from it as well. Yeah. And then you turn around, you sell the trains to another company and you sell all of your shares and leave that other person holding the bag. And suddenly they have a company that is not financially viable and is going to destroy them. Right. Well, in 17, you can even short. Yes. Stock. So, yes. you know, again, a lot of stock manipulation in those games. I don't tend to care for those types as much, basically because I don't like doing all the math. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of math. If oh, you've yeah. done that, particularly in 17, in my opinion. Sure. Um, uh, and then there's operational games. And so you would call 62 as an operational game. Yeah, 48. Uh, 46. 46, um, rather, yes. Yeah, 22. Yep. 22 is a little bit on the more in the stock market, but it's basically... It's a pretty good mix is what I've heard. Yeah. I've never played 22, oh, but I hear, it's, I hear it's, it's, it's a great combination it of is. the two. I just love that game. That, that's my number one. Um, you know, so... I tend to play the operational games also tend to feel more Euro like. Yes. You know? Yes. And so and a little more calm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you aren't like your blood pressure doesn't go way up when you get these these trash companies. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. you know. Also for me, thirty became very scripted. I mean, best because I played it so much. And you could just okay, you do this, you do that, you do this. I mean, assuming, depending on the company you were able to actually get. So I don't play 30 anymore. I still have it because people sometimes, oh, we want to play the original. It's still a classic, but it's it's, yeah. it's kind of, yeah, it's a little scripted now. You yeah. know, everybody yeah. knows what everything right. is. Right. But I, I think that the, uh, listen, at the end of an 18xx game, you have a certain amount of personal cash and you have shares of companies, sometimes many companies. And all of those share prices have gone up or gone down or been wherever they've been. Uh, the better that train has operated, the better that company has, uh, has operated their trains, the higher that stock value is. And you turn in all of those shares and earn money based on what that final share price is. The total of that plus the personal money that you have at the end of the game is your final score. And the person with the most money wins. Right. So... In, in a lot of ways, I love Age of Steam. One of the things I love about Age of Steam is that it gives you an 18xx experience in a very Euro way. I would disagree with that, but that's okay. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. I, um, in comparison to most um, games that came before it, it felt very much the, the operation of the trains in that game. Mm. Felt uh, uh, felt very much. <laughs> it is a brutal economic engine right, no, game. No, I look. By the way, I love Age of Steam. Yeah. But Age of Steam is basically on what we call the Chex branch of train games. The Chex branch. Mm -hmm. What is that? Chicago Express. Oh yes, 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 yes. Well, Harry Wu, quote unquote. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, for for. Some of, of us have been a long time in the, in the hobby. There's the 18XX branch. There's the Chex branch. There's a lot of games that, that descend from Chicago Express. And, sure, and, sure. Yeah, and they just steamed that whole family. And then there's... A, Wait, Age of Steam came out before Chicago Express, didn't it? Uh, I'm not sure because they share a lot. I'm pretty sure Age of Steam came first. But. Uh, yeah, except he didn't say Harry Wu made Age of Steam. No, it didn't. <laughs> That was exciting. We'll have to talk about that one day. Oh, but, we've talked about it a lot on the oh, podcast. Ha, so. Oh, have you? Yeah, that was that was really exciting. The name John Borer has come up many times. Ah, uh, yes, he was a horrible. He is not a good person. I'm sorry. I'll say it publicly. Say it. Yeah. So at, it. yeah. So at any rate, so 1862 falls definitely into the operational style yes of, so of playing I let, let me if it's okay what i want to do is i want to say as a person that is much more of a euro player and much less of an 18x player i'm getting into 18xx right here are the barriers to entry for 18xx for a euro player number one is you have to make some very very super important decisions right off the bat at the beginning of the game that are opaque, that it is not possible to see in your first, sometimes in your first 10 plays. But I exactly will say this, how. guys, 
Tom explains what you can do. Tom does a great job at that. Right. But I'm talking about 18xx in general, oh, not in so general. much not so much 62. The there are a lot of 18xx games that have things called private companies. These are small little companies that give little advantages on the board. And they are all bid for almost always, most of the time they're bid for in an auction and for a beginner player that has never played that before and is used to Euro games, I'm looking at these eight different companies that we're going to be bidding on, and I have no idea how to value right, them. Right. How, how do I value um, them? Yeah. And when I get one, how do I know which train company I should buy yeah. that's going to synergize with that? It is very, very opaque. It is very, very difficult to play. And your first time through, you're just lost. Well, the other problem is in 30, they are completely unbalanced yes. and the price that's on the private does not reflect its value. There are there are ones that are almost useless. There are ones that are <laughs> absolutely crucial and the price differential does not even appear uh, on there. Well, yeah, have, I mean you, that... There are that, some that get bid up way high. Yeah, that is definitely a failure in my opinion of that game is that the one company, which I won't spoil it, sure. um, is not priced properly. And so, you know, you don't know that you're really supposed to pay, you know, three times as much exactly. for that for that private. And I, I think the later... Um, the later... 18 XXs have dealt with the private issue and the unbalance much better than they're, the they're, early ones. They're getting better. They're certainly getting better. But I'll say even 1846 has got those privates. Now, the privates are more balanced. And, though, the other thing is you don't bid on them. Yes, you do. You go through, you get, you draft them. Oh, you draft them. You draft them. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm like, sorry. Whoa. I beg your pardon. You don't bid on them. You draft them. But that's not better. It, I would argue you're problem. still making a you're still making a very very hard choice that is completely opaque to you. Yeah, but I would argue that it's a simpler choice. It is. That's true. And that you can't make a as bad a choice as you can make in thirty. See, I don't agree with that. Here's I, here's okay. why. Here's why. I get four privates in my hand to draft in eighteen forty six. Right. Yeah. One of them is better than the other three. Right. I have no idea which one that is. Yeah, but see, at the... Okay, go ahead. Let me finish. Yeah, I'm sorry. (laughs) You don't have to say sorry. (laughs) Um, But if I'm playing 1830... Yeah. And that one that's better than the other ones comes up, you're bidding five. The next guy's bidding 10. I'm like, hey, I've got a little window. I realize, ah, people that know what they're doing Doing say that this is valuable. So... I have a better clue based on the bidding that this is something that I should go for than I do when it's just in my hand and no one can see these cards but me and and I have to choose completely blindly with no input. No, the problem is there is a group here in L.A. that would take you and just, oh, that that guy has no clue what he's doing, <laughs> so we'll just make him pay 500 for it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. No, yeah. so I would That's argue in, in 46... The impact of your private decision is not nearly as big as the impact in 30. Yeah, I think that's absolutely true. And, but, so, and, okay. and mostly it's because of how imbalanced the privates are more than more than anything else. Right. I think so, that's absolutely true. So you can recover. But still but but still my point is is that there is an opacity in the beginning yeah, of the, that, of the see, game that is difficult. You know, uh, you know, um as I go through the 1862 review, sure. and as I do the end of it, if I can get there, um, oh, oh, we'll get there. But we got We got some. We got some. We got some track to lay. We have some track to <laughs> before lay before we can before we can get there. I'll say the the other thing is that there is an opaqueness in terms of the companies in a lot of these 18xx games. The when you get this company. If you played the game before, you know, oh, this is where you run this company. This is kind of what you want to do with this with this company. There there are preferred track lays. There are expected places to go and things I like that. I agree with that, but I'm puzzled. Why are you puzzled? Because 62 has the same thing. Less so. Definitely mm, less so. No. Because it's such a crowded board because there are so many companies because the four companies that don't come out in a particular game. I'm not by the way, I'm not saying 
what what I'm describing is a criticism I have of 18xx from a from a new player's perspective. I'm not no, saying no, that I know I'm that, not saying that 1862 I'm, does not fall into some of these. Yeah, and I guess I'm, saying I'm saying that as a, someone who's taught probably yeah. you know dozens of people. Yeah, you know all of them. Well, not all of them. I've only taught 30 and 46 and 62. Mm-hmm. Those are the only three that, that I'll teach to an, a brand new player to 18xx. Sure, and only 30 because they insist on it. Um, normally right. my teaching game is actually 46. I think 46 is a very good teaching game. I, I really like this one as a teaching game too. Uh, the third thing that can sometimes be a, a hurdle to getting into these games for, for a Euro gamer is the meanness of the stock market. The, what you were saying, the, the stock based games are very are, brutal, are really games where you can just, you can can't even see it as a as an early player. No, there is no way. Do you know that um, on on Twitter, mm-hmm. Clear Claw said it took him a hundred plays of eighteen XX to really understand the game. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, I, I have another friend. And he's like, but because he wanted to play thirty, I'm like, look, the, your first play, you're gonna lose. What? How could you say that I'm gonna lose? And you're like, because. There's no way, right? Yes. And that's one thing, Euro players, there's just no way to see the train rush. Yes, I agree with that. Yeah. The train rush being that people, when you buy trains, eventually you get to a point where when you buy the first train of this category, the early trains rust and they die. Now, what does rust mean? Rust means those trains are removed from the game and you no longer have access to those trains. If your rail company had only those trains, you have no trains. You are and, not allowed to have no trains as a company in the game. the trains run before you can buy a train. Yes, they do. So if you have no trains, that means you have nothing, no dividends, no revenue, no plowing, nothing. No way of making money, and your company is about to go bankrupt in all those shares that you bought. You're basically out of the game. And that happens in 18xx. That is something that can happen. The more operationally based the game is, the less often that happens. Well, the problem, that, or we can talk about this. Sure. Right? If you think this is a problem, in 62, you can't go bankrupt. Yes. Okay, but at the same time, you still lost. Yes. So you could say that 30 is better because at least you lose faster. <laughs> and you aren't stuck in a three-hour, four-hour game. I think there's a different, different feeling from being bankrupted and and dropping out of the game entirely well, the game's and simply over. and simply finishing in in with not so much money. I think there is a there is a qualitative difference in the feeling uh, that 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 provides to you. Yeah, uh, I think it so p- player on elimination. The we say the Euro games when they came out uh, took player elimination off the table to some degree right. as opposed to games that happened right. before that. Right, exactly. And that is mostly a good thing. Right. Except I, what you're saying is right, that you can be completely out of it and have to sit there and keep playing the game, and right. that's, that's a but suboptimal see, the, experience, the too. The whole thing about being elimination being better mm-hmm. is depends on the length of the game. Mm-hmm. So if you're, in, if you're playing 1862, and that's a four-hour game, and you're in receivership in the, in the first 90 minutes, yep. you know, you would rather, I'm, I know a lot of players would rather be eliminated. That's possible. Definitely true. Because it's so long. Do you understand? Yes. It's, no, it, I agree. Yeah. It, it's, it's a haul. It's a, it's a four-hour game or more, or more or less, depending on how experienced you are. So given what, what I just said about the three things for me that were the, the opacity of the private companies, yeah. the difficulty in determining where your train is supposed to go, and the meanness of the stock market as being three of the main things that are barriers to entry, 1862 is actually a pretty good game to start people off on if they come from a Euro background, I believe. And I, and I would argue that you can do it. I'm not saying that sure. it, that it's a bad idea. I think 46 is better. Right. For but, me for but, me what I'm saying is that that 60 oh, so so let's get into why I think 62 is good and then you can say why you think it's it's not as good. As good. Right. Um it is a very crowded board, which is a good thing. Every space on the board has either a town or a city on it. Every single one, mm-hmm. which means when you're building track, you're always you're you're. It feels very much like um, 
It feels very much like Age of Steam. You're, it feels very much like other tiling games where you're not building these long tiles that that don't connect to anything. Like every, 30, yeah. Exactly. Every tile is going through something important and every decision you make is hurting or harming or helping somebody. So it's a very tactical decision that Euro gamers are used to. They're used to that kind of, of track building. Uh, second thing that's important is that there are three different company types in the game. Train, do you mean? No, com- company uh, um, charters. Oh, right. Okay, which, no. is, which is trains. I thought it was two. It was parliament and... No, 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 no. Oh, no, that's no, not no, what no, you're no. speaking of. I'm talking about local trains. Okay, you're talking about you're, the trains. The company that you, that you start is either running local trains or it's running express trains or it's running freight trains, and they operate differently. And that's where, that's where my problem comes in, see? See, I think that that is, that is, that is the kind of nuance that Eurogamers will understand. Except that, guys, one Eurogamer failed to explain it, which is ex- exactly making my point. Um, I explained most of the things. I forgot one, <laughs> I forgot one thing <laughs> about that. Except it was kind of important. Uh, I believe you were in that game for two hours and didn't notice that that wasn't happening. I did not. I all I hey, you know what, guys? I know how to, how to invest. So it's like okay, well, this is running for uh, two hundred and twenty of of revenue, so I'm buying that. I'm not even paying attention. Was I supposed to be teaching? No, no that because, was me. Because he won't let me teach. He, he says I'm a terrible teacher, and I'm like, you know what? Terrible teacher. Never said terrible. <laughs> teacher that was not what i said <laughs> so, so let's, let's describe up it. to so the issue there are there are towns and there are cities on the map there are also off-board areas there are ports right. and there are the red areas which basically connect to the city of london or far off places when you are building a train route you are trying to maximize your revenue your cities are worth uh, twenty dollars every time you pass through a city. Ports can sometimes be worth forty, seventy, even a hundred, depending on what point in the game you are. London in this map is worth a lot. It starts off being worth a hundred and can get all the way up to two hundred. So, building track that are going to allow you to buy trains that connect to these points—that's how much money your train is making. If my train goes from London, which is worth a hundred, and connects through a city which is worth forty, and connects through another city which is worth twenty, and then goes to a port which is worth seventy, I add up all of those values, and that is how much that that company is going to earn in a round. And then it's going to pay out that every share is worth 10% of that. So it's going to get a payout of, of, of one tenth of that. That's basically the math of it with this game though. There are three different types of train companies, right? The local train company cannot deliver to London. It cannot deliver to a port. It can only go to the cities and towns within it. Now, towns, nothing else scores towns. So there are these little dits. There are these little dots on the board. And local trains, the benefit of local trains is they earn 20 bucks every little town that they go through. And towns do not count as one of the spaces that they're going through. It The, the spaces are invisible to it. So it could potentially leave a city go through three little town markers and then hit another city. And that counts as one space, basically. You can get a very cheap train that only goes one space distance and it's going to connect 20 points for this, uh, 30 points for this city. it's two spaces, right? It goes to the first, the town space and then the end space. Correct, yes, yes, correct. Uh, But it's, it's getting 30 for the city, 30 for the other city on the other end, and 20, 20, 20 for all of the little towns that it connects. So it, it could be very, very efficient. In addition, those local trains, they're going to get a $10 bonus for every hex that they go through as they travel. So they're getting a subsidy, basically. That can be very powerful in, in, in a game. Everyone else is focusing on getting to this port and getting to London. There is a game to be played where you're zigging right. while other people are zagging, which is very interesting. Express trains are more like the common trains that you have in most ETNXX games, which is they don't count those little towns at all. They can deliver to ports. They can deliver to cities right. out off the board, and they're counting up the cities in between. So that is the more vanilla way that, that you go. 
those trains are going to be aiming for whatever the big scoring places are, and they're going to be trying to connecting those. And then freight trains. Freight trains work on a hex system, which is radically different than everything else. Every time a train crosses a the edge of a hex and goes into another hex, that counts as a space for for freight trains. Freight trains get paid where they end and where they start. Basically, they they're going to connect from end to end, and they're going to they're going to score on both ends and then in addition they're going to score 30 bucks 20 bucks or 30 bucks depending on whether or not they hit a port for every hex that they cross and that's how they score which creates a really interesting from a euro gamers perspective going into 18xx what i like about it is i have a puzzle and i can see and understand how the puzzle works it's like oh a freight train would work best if it went from here to here. That's a really good freight train run. That would be a horrible run for a local train to do. That is a okay but not great place for an express train to go, right? And each one of them has their own particular. You're building track differently depending on which train type that you're running. Okay, so I find freight trains to be extremely confusing, it's and, it is difficult, and the table found them to be confusing as well. Well, because I taught it incorrectly. No, but even, which we're bringing even, up for the second time. No, no, no. <laughs> that's not. I okay. Even had you had you taught it correctly, mm -hmm. the biggest problem is it doesn't run on track, and people are expecting it to run on track. And so, well, it does. It does run on track. No, it has it to follow. The, it has to follow the track. Right. It follows the hexes, as you just said. But if, but you can't move from one hex to another with a freight train if there's not a track that goes from right, that hex to another. Right, but it's still, do you see? Because I know what you're saying. Okay, but good. It's not, okay, so for everybody it, just, else, what I'm saying is normally you, you know, like you have this idea of trains in the real world and and back in the day the train you know the original steam trains and mm -hmm. they went from station to station and sometimes they went all around and all kinds of things and so you can relate mm -hmm. yes the way that 62 implements freight trains is not like anything that you can relate to well there's there are some 18 xx's that that use hex trains right not that I've ever played. Okay, uh, I think there are. I just think, don't think. Okay, I know. I don't I, think we played them. Okay, so I'm just saying sure. that that feels very, very unintuitive. And every time I teach it, that is that freight trains always come up, and it's not the shoe. No, no, no. It's okay, a, it's, it's a it's a tricky, tricky thing. I right. I agree with that. I agree with that. I guess now it's still really good once you know 18xx. Sure, there is no issue with it. Sure. And so, but we're talking about the new player experience. Yeah, I guess what I like about it is that here are th when you're buying a company, you're getting the following. You're getting a starting city. You're getting a place right. where you start on the map. So mm -hmm. you can look on the map and you can see where that is. And you can see, oh, it's positioned really well for this, not so well for that. Okay. And okay. all that sort of stuff, mm -hmm. right? But in addition, in this game, you also start off with a train type. Uh -huh. And that tells you, oh, this train has to build track in a very different way than this train does or this train does. In a Euro, from a Euro gamer's perspective, I like the complexity and the interest of the map in that in that sense. I agree with you that that understanding how the three train types work is hard, but. For me, it's it's like explaining a Vital Lacerda game more than it is explaining 18xx. If I'm trying to teach a person 1846 and I'm trying to tell you here are the 10 private companies that we're going to be choosing, they're... It's much uh, see, harder to understand But that see, is. again, you know, that I, and I talked about... I Okay, guys, I sent Tom an email about teaching. Yes. And I'm talking... Because the way I teach mm -hmm. is to say that, look, people, we're not playing for lottery winnings. Yes. So you may lose. And so when you get your set of, of uh, privates in 46, mm -hmm. just look at them and see what, what looks good and take that. Do you see? Versus yeah. having to explain, you know, 
and I'm talking only from the new player perspective, but having to explain freight trains and having everybody, well, is that, does that work? I mean, my experience has been just tons of questions over those trains and versus with, with 46, my experience has been, we, we get into it. We move on. Yeah. There is a frustration in 46, even if you know, oh, we're just playing to play. We're just playing to learn the game trying to pick things that I have no idea what they are and what but they mean is tough. Because at the end of the day, even for the experienced player, I would say that's probably 10 to 15% of your points. And a lot of them go away. Yes, well, they eventually go away, right? Well, no, there's, a, there's one that does not. Yes. But again, it doesn't have the impact on the game that matters that much. So, you know, if you like mail, if you want to be a post post person, all, all, take the mail one. All the more reason why I don't think it's that great because the, because oh, it, no, it's, as a, pres- it's as, presented as a as a it's the very first decision you make and it is consequential. Not much. Well, not not. Yeah, my po- my point is is much easier to explain. Yes, forty six is not a great eighteen XX overall. It has a lot of issues, but not so many for the new player. Yeah. is my assessment. I think it's a very good. I think it's a very good new player game. I think eighteen seventy nine is a pretty good new player. I've never game. played seventy nine. Yeah, it's it's very good. It is the stock version of the game. It's a stock game uh-huh. that is very stripped down and very ah. elegant okay so yeah, i say maybe i will i will play that you one. should i think you, I, I think you might really like it but yeah i back think to with six- 62 mm-hmm. that oh now of course and you know uh, tom and i we always go for the the full rules but my cotton does present an, a variant for new players that doesn't use all that special stuff yeah i'm not sure I'm not sure I want to play that game though. Well, I but, get it. But the que- me and you don't want to play that game. Sure. But the question is, do we want to present the game to brand new players of 18xx? Maybe. Yeah. You maybe. see. You see what I'm saying? That maybe we should consider that. But no. Me, I mean, if you're going to really play 18xx, you're going to play with the full sure. flavor. I'm just saying that that might be a reasonable alternative. I agree. Let's 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 get back to 1862 and let's see what else we need to say. We say that we start the game by um, auctioning off shares. There's a parliament thing. Uh, right there. Okay, so there's a parliament at the start, which basically is a way to get um, companies into everybody's hands. Yes. Okay, and so because oh, that's one thing we should mention. Unlike some games, uh, 18xx, you are not winning without it. I mean, not 18, not all of them, but 1862, you will not win without a company. Correct. Okay, you cannot win by just investing. You will not w- win that way. So um, there's a parliament at the start to get everybody a company. Right. A- and, and these so- companies are funded by the government, essentially. Right, exactly. And which is a good thing because we don't have a lot of money to start the right, game. exactly. And so getting a company where we buy a certain percentage of the shares, 50%, right. and, then the com- and then the government pays for the other 50%, right. we have a lot of money in the company, we can buy the trains we need, right. we can expand, we can do all the things we need to do. For, for new players or for even for experienced players, there is a good thing in that in, oh, that, in, in that in that starting off the game, we're not already having to do the hard math and crunch the numbers and, right. and, and have companies fail right off of the bat, right. which can yeah. happen in most of the other 18xx games. Right. And the other thing is, you know, you still have decisions, though, mm-hmm. because you can um, start your company with less money and you, sure. and you have more money to maybe invest in other companies. Which we did in the last right. game we played. Yeah. Or you can give your company the maximum amount of money so that your company perhaps can last a little longer as we go through the operating rounds. Exactly. And in this game, you can also, later on generally, uh, form a company that is not formed by the parliament. In other words, it is not subsidized by the government. These companies, you're going to have to put in a lot more money. But... Those companies, as their value goes up, more money is coming in. When people buy shares, right. they're buying them at those higher and higher price levels. You're getting more money in the company. You can buy more um, station tokens. Station tokens, very simply, are uh, cities have circles on them. And when those circles are covered by a station token, a 
train company that does not have that color station token can go to that city, but it cannot pass through that city. Well, so one there thing too that we should mention that mm-hmm. I think is a negative for new players in sure. 62 is the fact that each company, like if you have two trains, which you almost always will, well, only one train can make revenue from any given given you know, city. And I, and that and makes it, again, confusing because now I have to remember which, particularly when, the, when when they get big, well, did I go through that one or not? And I think that that, I'll say this, I believe that that is a impediment to experienced 18xx players. I don't think that's a problem for new players. I, the, having experienced it, it's a problem. I well, okay. no, no, no. I think it's, the problem is, is that, Every other 18xx game doesn't do it that way. You can score the no. same city multiple times with multiple trains. No, the problem is, well, mem- okay, so I've got a five and a six and a four, okay? So that, and I'm running the express. That means a train, a train that goes through, four, that connects through four cities, connects through, through five, five cities, cities, and, and connects, connects through, through six, six cities. cities. I have to remember every city that the other ones all went through, and you're telling me that that's not a problem? That's yeah. a problem. No, it's not a problem. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to defer to you because you know a lot more about 18xx than He's I do. He's actually going to defer to me. Absolutely, I'm going to defer to you. You are, you, are the, you are the veteran gamer. You are the pro. You know this way better than I do, so I'm going to accept that. No, that I, the you're right, and, and it's only because it just creates more more you know churn if we sure. can if we can call it that so now we, for we the experienced about- player it's actually very challenging and it's good sure i agree i agree i think it is i think it's no, i think definitely. it's pretty cool I, I i really yeah yeah no i'm i'm agreeing with you on the actual concept sure it's good and it's it's different so you buy your train company, you invest your starting money, and you get 50% of that company. The other 50% comes from the government. You're going to the first round, you're going to lay a little bit of track, and you're going to buy some trains. You're not even going to be able to run a train because you have to run them before you buy them. Next round, you're going to maybe buy some more shares in that train company. Maybe you're going to buy some shares in, an- in another train company because you see, ooh, look, they laid some really good track. That company looks like it's going to do uh, well. One more point about the stock buying. Sure. 1862 is one of the few 18XXXs where you can own 100% of the stock. That's correct. This, again, in my opinion, is not newbie friendly. Um, I don't know. You're buying them one share at a time. I don't think that's that bad. No, but the problem is newbies don't realize what it really means. What does it really mean? Okay, so <laughs> if I pretend can get, I'm a newbie, because, right. because I might be, because I'm not sh- sure I'm seeing what you're saying. <laughs> okay, so I, I'm you know been doing my stuff, and now I have a permanent train, mm-hmm. and I get a second permanent train. Mm-hmm. In the meantime, I'm kind of getting this this stuff, and you're brand new, and you have no idea why does she, why isn't she buying you know the stock of the 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 company that's running for two fifty, right. and her company's only running for one seventy. So why does she keep buying that stock? I'm buying the two fifty. Right. And then at the end of the game, the person who was running for one seventy is now running for four hundred and gets all of the money. That's gotcha. a problem. No, yes. It's it's looking f- it's not looking at what the train is earning right now or what the company is earning right now, but what they might earn in the future. But the which, newbie can't know that. Which brings me to my next point, which I think is the, the last thing we need to explain about this game and the thing that, for me, vaults it into the stratosphere of how great the game is. It is a good game. I think that the coolest thing about the game is the merger system in the game. Yeah, absolutely. So, as I said, you have invested money in this in this company, right. and the and the parliament has put the rest of the money into the company. You've bought trains, you've laid track, you're running these trains, you're earning this money. There comes a point where you're running out of things to do. You don't have a lot of money in your in your company anymore. It's paying out fine, but it's not it's it's not gonna pay out a lot more. Right. You can form another company, but you can also, if you have two companies, or if that, you that and another person have formed, a company, yeah. you can merge companies. When you right. merge companies, you are going to create one of these companies is gonna die, the other one is gonna live on, their their markers are shared. And their st- and their certificates are shared. So if I have their an ex- trains are shared. Yes, 
if I have an express train company and I have a freight train company, guess what? I now have an express and freight train company right. and it can run both kinds of trains. Right. And if I've built my track correctly, if I've done it well, there's synergy between those two. They can work really, really well. Yeah. Sometimes a local train company merging with a local train company. You mean with an express? Are you, you're saying two locals? Possibly. Possibly. If the, tr- if the track layout, if their, if their station markers are in the right places, they could have all, the, all of the towns on the board could be connected through one avenue. I understand that. I guess. Um, and it's less uh, yeah, common. It's less common. Yeah, because most times you want to diversify your, your train portfolio. portfolio. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it's absolutely true. Yeah. It, you, by making a larger company, uh, that has more than one type of train that can run on it, you're creating trains that have, you're creating companies that have true explosive potential right. in the market that can do amazing, amazing things. Right. But you're fighting on this very small map and everybody is trying to find See, a way that, that connects. That's really funny because, I mean, I'm not, I agree with you. I just have never found a small the smallness of the map to be significant, but I will look at it again. Really, really, really. Did, haven't you and I the, the the last two times we played this game? Ha- hasn't the most devastating moves been placing one station marker to lock off but, a place? But that happens in all of them. Yeah, but I guess for me, it's because there are no empty spaces on this map. Right, but everything see- has everything has a place for a station marker to go. It makes more opportunities for a person to devastate somebody by placing one of those train markers, and suddenly my train can no longer go from A right. to B. But see, it's you know, at some point, you know, in time, I'll sit down with you and I'll show you why that's not as big a deal, in my opinion. In You're, my opinion, you know so much more about these games than I do. I'm dying to know this. Yeah, and why it doesn't really matter because we don't want to get into it. It's a kind of a discussion right here. Sure, but maybe we'll get into it and then come back to you guys with the assessment. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. So, final, final thoughts on 1862. Where, where are you at? On okay, that? so I was fortunate enough to play with Mike Hutton, the designer, oh. and Yorin um, from Splatter Games. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, intimidated is not a big enough word. To, to describe the way I felt, Iran is a Iran is a <laughs> is a notoriously brutal 1862 player. Right, right, no, right, exactly. So, do, do you want to be taught how you really play the game? Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, at any rate, 62 for me is definitely my number two favorite after 22, and the reason that I like it is because it's so transparent. You can see the companies that are coming and you can make plans. Okay, well, now I own this one, but this one over here is coming up. So I need to plan my funds Mm -hmm. and look to see what the other funds are of the other players and what they think, what I think they're going to do so that I can make plans that are much more likely to happen. Yep. And that's even like, hmm, well, I really wanted this company, but Tom is going to, Tom has priority. Yep. And he may take this company from me, so I need a plan B. You see? Yep. And And I think yep. that 62 does a great job with that. And I really like it for that. And that you can kind of, you know, the, even though the stocks aren't brutal, they're still very significant as you operate your 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 train yes. what you got okay so the new players what you don't want to do is be stuck with one one train company is in the northeast and the other one is in the southwest and they can't work together gotcha. you you know yes you, absolutely you, yeah you want them to be able to work together to be able to merge although fortunately they don't have to touch to merge unlike some companies yep that you know some some games that you do have to touch to um, merge. I think 22 is like that. So, you know, for me, again, it's my second favorite. I think, as Tom says, yeah, everything that he's saying is true. I think we just have a disagreement on the new player experience. The new friendliness. Yeah, I'll talk from the new player perspective. Yeah, yeah, right. Because, for example, as a 
18xx game, I don't think 46 is that good. Unfortunately, for 46, there are some dead companies. And so you have to steer the newbie away from the, no, you don't want the B and O, it sucks. You know, and so... Uh, that's the light blue in the bottom center. Yeah, yes, right. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, yes, it's yes. Tough, terrible. Tough, tough, tough one. Yeah, yeah. If you, uh, have the, if you have the mining company, it's not terrible, but uh, it's still it's not still great. It's still not good. Yeah, I agree. No, agreed, so... Agreed. You're, and I think 62's companies are much better balanced. I'm not as afraid of a newbie taking a horrible company well because because randomly which which type of train each company runs is randomly dealt out each right. game there yeah. is no such thing as a great company or a bad company uh, it's, it's going to be no that's not necessarily true because if you go into london at the end of the day, that is a positive over the companies that cannot reach london in my opinion well i will say uh, but if those companies that are next to London get local charters, that becomes a significantly less valuable company until it's merged. Right. But when it's merged, you see? But but that company can't even put a token in London until it's merged. Well, then means, maybe you wouldn't take that. So there this is are, what I'm saying. What I'm saying oh, is, is that it is, what, it is what, situational. What you're saying, I'm sorry. What you're saying is that um, the local company next to London... Uh, it subtracts value from the nominal. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm right. saying that, that 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 how good that company really is is dependent not just on its location, which is the majority, which most 18xers uh, are. The, where the company starts and where right. it is, its geography is its destiny. Right. In this game, it's a little more complicated than right. that. The other thing is, though, I think for the newbie, it's very hard to evaluate a, a freight company yeah, sure. what does that mean in the geographic term sure do you sure. understand uh, totally let me tell you my final thoughts on on 1862 um from a newer 18x xers perspective and from right. a guy that is a little bit on the outside looking in i'm not a, a 18xx player but i'm becoming one um i think that there are uh, three games that are great if you are not an 18xx player and want to come in and play it I think 1846 is probably the simplest and clearest operational game right. to play. I think 1879 is a clear, simple, distilled uh, experience to understand the stock market type game of 18xx. And I do think that 1862 is harder. It is more of a rules teach. It is more of a rules explanation. There are more things you need to know. There are more things you need to understand. There are more things going on in the game. But I don't think, I think it's an easier teach than on Mars. I think it's an easier teach than... Uh, is it an easier teach? Oh, I think it is. No, I'm just trying to think. I'm sure, not, I'm, sure, I'm sure, not dis sure. disagreeing with you. Um um, in a way, but I, in a way, it's not. Again, you still have that that problem with the freights. I think that the freights. I think that that if the freights is the problem in the teach, I think it's a, it's much more uh, surmountable than than a lot of the and a lot of the difficulties in understanding yeah. uh, on Mars. Yeah, and the problem for me is on on Mars feels very intuitive, mm -hmm. but that's because of my background. Gotcha. Yeah. And so, therefore, it that may, could be very different, right? Yeah. And, well, I will say this much, though: if you've seen The Martian, <laughs> the movie The Martian, which I've seen at least eight times, it helps a little bit. But the the interlocking mechanisms that that Vital is so good at are so on display here that understanding how any one thing works is entirely dependent on how it interacts with all of these other things. This game is much simpler in that sense. Right. There are but all there are a bunch of things XXs that I've played are much simpler than any of the tall. I mean, of his heavy games, I've, I've not played his sure. his lighter ones, but I, I just, think that you know. I just think that that 1862 is a rich and dense experience, and it is dense in a way that is, I think, grokable to the heavier gamers in the in the Euro space. And I encourage no, I, I do too. I I'm people just to saying, jump in and try it. Yeah. And also, 46 apparently is out of print. Oh, is it now? Yeah. No. So then definitely go for 62. <laughs> 
Hey, if you enjoyed that video, you very well might enjoy the other videos you now see being suggested to you on screen. Also, we'd greatly appreciate it if you could like, share, or subscribe to our Game Brain channel. Thanks so much.